When your idea has very general outlines, you can divide the process of silk painting in two or more steps. First, you draw and paint what is clear for you, and then the result may tell you what and how to do next. Silk painting with me, Ilona Sture. Today I'm gonna paint pure silk, and I will use paints that need to be steamed, and I will use only two colors, two paints, and solvent-based resist. This silk was stretched in one of the previous videos, in which I showed how to cut silk. And one side, as an example, was cut unevenly. This misalignment needs to be corrected, so that I could define the size of the design. The drawing paper is ready, and by folding it in half, I find the center. I have done something similar before. So, I have a drawing divided into four parts. I mark the margins beyond which the drawing will not go. Later, we will see why. And let me draw again the letters in these squares. And this time, let it be A, B, C, D, or whatever. You can use any letters you like, or you can write any word or any name. I don't care about the accuracy of the shapes, because I will intentionally distort them later. And I will add another element to the composition, such an angle. The idea is that the top of this corner should be in a different place. If you are interested in the subject of composition, write me in the comments below, and I'll do a couple of videos about the composition. Since my silk is dense, I'm tracing the pattern with a marker so that it's more visible through the silk. I don't need this line. As I promised, I'll show you why I made these margins in the drawing. Let's assume that we don't have these margins, and the pattern is practically resting against the edge of the silk. But later, the silk will have to be either hemmed or stretched on a subframe, and this will take at least 2 cm. In this case, the image will be cropped, so this detail should be taken into account when creating a picture. Now I pin the pattern to the silk. I use usual pins. I put a couple of books under the silk for the pattern to be seen. Sorry, but this point fell out of the video. But in this video it might be seen. And now I can apply the resist. I have a solvent-based resist today. First, I check out how it flows. Like I said before, I'm going to distort the shapes a little bit. My point is, if your hand is not steady 
and straight lines don't work, you can make them intentionally wavy. By the way, that's why I don't stick the buttons all the way in, so I can get under them with a resist and brush. The resist might dry thoroughly, otherwise it can smudge and paint can flick through. When it's dry, I take out the pins and I can start painting, but I will come back to resist later. So, water, orange paint, black, plate as a palette and porous paper to dry the brushes, a synthetic round brush and a bristle flat. So I'm using only two paints today, but the silk itself has color, plus the color of the resist. So the image is going to be quite picturesque, as I like to do. And at the same time, it should come out organic and very close in color. I will not do strong contrast this time. It will be quite a lyrical image. The palette will be there almost all the time, so that you can see how the colors blend together. I have mentioned that I will be painting this silk in two steps. When I have the first coat of paint dry, I will go back to resist and details and then paint again. Unfortunately, silk darkens a lot when it gets wet, especially colored silk, and you can't see the transitions very well.
Now I will thin slightly the angle and while it's drying I will continue to paint the letters. To speed up the drying process, you can use a hair dryer. And now I go back to resist and add the details inside the angle to make the image more interesting. The drops of resist can be removed with paper. I decided to draw each figure differently. I like variety. And I change the rhythm of the stripes to mixing white with narrow. The direction in which you lead your line 
can be also changed to see which way is more convenient for you. Such gaps will allow paint to flow through and I close it. I'd like to show you how the resist shines until it dries. And when it's dry, I go back to painting. First I put the general tone and then I mark the stripes within it.
For drying the segment, you can simply wipe it with paper.